Hey everybody, Barry here again. I know I said I was gonna shave my beard, but I just don't have time. So let's continue on with the engine. Gonna get the crank in today. Gonna tear off all this blue masking paper and junk like that. Put in our bearings. Let me clean this looks. So nice. In no time, we'll have a rotating assembly in this. So this morning, I'm gonna go ahead and put the crank in. Time to get this thing on a roll. Cause I'd like to have the engine done. That way I can bolt the transmission to it. Pull the engine out of the van. And then at least get some motor mounts made out very quickly. And after I get the engine in place, I can get the tunnel cut apart. I start at the rear end. I'd like to keep it a roller as long as I can so I can pull it in and out of the shop so it's not in the way. And then when I'm ready, I can do the rear end over a weekend. So let's get the crank put in this thing now. Our first torque sequence in this is to do the inner bolts at 15 foot-pounds and then 80 degrees. Next is our side bolts in here at 18 foot pounds. And last we have our outer studs at 15 foot pounds and then 53 degrees. Everything's all torqued up. Crank spins nice and free, no binding. And we're all good. Got the crank in. And just realized that I haven't plugged these DOD ports yet. So I went and bought some set screws. These are 3 by 16 regular Allen key set screws. This hole is 5 16th. So I can just put a 3 by 16 tap down in here. Run it down a quarter inch or 3 8 or something like that. And I'll put some JB Weld or two part epoxy or something on them. Send them home. And then we'll be all good. So here we go, got that one just about down to flush. And as I'm tapping, I got a shot vac put in through the cam uh, hole here, and it's right down and under the DOD port. So any metal that's coming down, it'll get most of it back here, and I'll blow the engine out anyway. So this will be perfectly fine. I should be able to either tighten it down that last little bit or run the tap maybe another half turn. I'll have them all drilled and tapped first, then I'll go and back them all out and put some sort of epoxy on them. And here we have it. All the plugs are in. A couple of them are a little bit below the surface, but it doesn't matter really how far you go down because the, the hole is the same size like the whole way down to here, about two, two and a half inches. I'll go ahead and pull all these back out, tread locker or epoxy or whatever it is I'm planning on doing with it, put them back in, we'll be set to go. Then later on, I'll put cam in. 
and have that in and ready. Got the plugs all epoxied in. I used Permatex Cold Weld. It's a two-part resin and hardener, and it'll work perfectly fine. It's not as pretty looking as it could be, but the engine's gonna be assembled and nobody's ever gonna know anyway. You can get ICT billet covers to delete all this stuff, but I'm all about doing it by myself and not spending $200 on something that just looks pretty. So let's go ahead and bolt on the rear cover and put the cam in. Then we can put in our lifter and buckets. Probably put on the front cam plate. Uh, still lots of stuff we can do here yet. So I went to go and put the lifter buckets and the lifters in and found out that uh, we got some issues. So this is a Gen 4 block and it's got this tab on here so you don't put your AFM lifters in you know backwards so it aligns the trays correctly. These are Gen 3 trays. Something's not lining up. So option number one buy new lifter buckets that fit this but i don't really have a lot of time i don't want to spend 60 bucks on buckets option two i guess is to notch this out so that it fits down there but i risk breaking or doing it wrong and then i don't have any buckets option three is to kind of slice this off right there because it doesn't actually do anything it's just an alignment tab my only risk factor is, uh, you know, getting metal down here, but I can stuff two or three good rags down there, put my vacuum in through the side here. As I'm cutting, take my time, go slow, don't spit metal everywhere, that kind of thing. So don't worry, I have a plan. 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 Okay, boys and girls, this is one of those don't try this at home things. Before I go and clean this all up off camera, just want to give you an idea of what it looks like. So really, really clean cut. Just a little bit of a ridge left here, so we know that we didn't cut into the head itself. Not that it would really make much of a difference or scarred up the edge here a little bit, it's not gonna hurt anything. What will hurt something is all of this aluminum filings. That's why I got rags stuffed everywhere. And the vacuum running, so, I'll vacuum all this rags here first. This is where the don't do this at home thing comes in because I don't want to be responsible for you leaving metal down in your engine and blowing it up and then you're like, oh, that, that idiot Barry told me to do it. Anyway, so not that I think anybody here would do it, but disclaimers. So I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum this, clean it all up, pull the rags out, vacuum it again, brake cleaner, vacuum, brake cleaner, vacuum. That kind of thing. It'll be done in no time. I'm not one to go leave a metal inside of an engine. I do not want this engine to blow up because I'm putting a lot of time into it and 
although I'm putting little money into it, I still don't want it to blow up. So I'm probably doing it in the wrong order, already having the crank in and having the cam stabbed in it and now cutting stuff up, but and sometimes you gotta deal with problems as they arise. So here we are, Station Road Rat Rods. Well, I went ahead and did the other two. This one's cut off, that one's cut off. Nice and clean, no metal in there. I pulled the cam out, made sure there's no shavings left on it. There was a little bit, but nothing serious. So I, I pulled that out, blew everything in around there, make sure there's nothing, wiped the cam off, re-oiled it, put it back in. The crank, I'll turn it over after, make sure there's nothing on it. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lifters in and I think we'll be pretty much finished up then. Crazy? Absolutely. But it worked. And there we have it, boys and girls. Lifter buckets are in, a little slight modification, and we can roll on forward ahead of schedule. So I think that's enough excitement for me today. We got a lot done, and I think in the next video, I'll get the rods and pistons assembled, get the rings capped, and put the whole rotating assembly together. Then after that, I can decide which set of heads I'm gonna use, whether it's the 862s, and make like 10.7 to one, or use the 243s and make nine six to one to be safer in boost, but not as much low in power. So we'll talk about it. Maybe you guys could give me some pointers because I'm sort of on the fence, undecided, and it'd be nice to have a little push in one direction or the other. So thanks for watching everybody. Have a good night.